Hello everyone, I'm Dr. Neha Narula, family physician at Stanford Healthcare. And I'm Dr. Olga Goldberg, a comprehensive neurologist at Stanford. Thank you so much for joining us today on this educational collaboration between the Department of Neurology and the Department of Primary Care, which is made possible by the Value-Based Care Program. Our goal in these talks is to take a deeper dive into the most common neurologic complaints that we see in primary care and present the latest evidence-based pointers that you can use in your own practice. Now, today we're gonna to be talking about how to diagnose migraine. Fantastic, let's dive right in, Olga. Headaches are one of the most common complaints that patients come in to see us in primary care. First and foremost, let's talk about some different types of headaches. Many patients are surprised to hear that there are different distinctions between headaches. We hear a lot about tension headaches and migraine. As a specialist, how do you differentiate between the two? So by definition, migraines are generally debilitating. Generally, they last four to 72 hours, and although they're often unilateral, they can switch sides. They also have associated features such as nausea or light and sound sensitivity. Tension headaches, on the other hand, do not have any migraineous features such as nausea or light or sound sensitivity. The tricky thing though is that we often think of tension type headache as being a band-like distribution and pressure-like, which they are, but migraine can also have these same features. Ah, I think that's actually where a lot of us get tripped up. We think classically tension headaches, band-like, migraines, unilateral, but you're saying not necessarily. Migraines can also have band-like features or happen bilaterally? Exactly. Let's take a closer look at the diagnostic criteria for migraine. It has to have two out of the four listed features, unilateral location, pulsating quality, moderate to severe intensity lasting four to 72 hours, and aggravation by routine physical activity. And in addition to numbers two through four, migraine must be accompanied by nausea, photo or phonophobia. It's important to understand that the headache does not have to be unilateral or throbbing to meet the diagnostic criteria for migraine. And in fact, about 59% of migraines are unilateral. And that leaves about 40% that actually have bilateral features. Got it. That's really helpful to know that distinction. So. Technically, someone who has a bilateral headache of moderate intensity that they see worsens when they go up the stairs and is also associated with some nausea will technically meet the diagnostic criteria for migraine? Precisely. And on the other hand, tension type headache is typically mild, does not worsen with routine activity, and will not have nausea or light or sound sensitivity. Excellent. Thank you for that. Now that we know how to differentiate between the two, I have to ask you this. I get many patients who have a hard time believing that they have migraines and attribute their headaches to either sinusitis or other causes. How likely is an episodic headache a migraine? That is actually a really interesting question. There's a landmark study by Tepper and colleagues, which found that if a patient or physician diagnoses migraine, they're right about 99% of the time. If a patient or physician diagnoses a headache as not a migraine, they're wrong 85% of the time. Huh, that is really fascinating and very high percentages in both diagnosing correctly and incorrectly. So I guess how do I as a PCP increase my diagnostic accuracy with migraine headaches? Well, we have a quick and simple tool to help diagnose migraine known as ID migraine, which consists of three questions as shown in our slide about light sensitivity with headache, nausea with headache, or decreased ability to function with headache. If the patient answers yes to two out of those three questions, they likely have a migraine. Oh, this is simple and concise. I can definitely see myself using this tool in my practice. Thank you so much. My next question for you is about patients that come in with headaches that are variable in severity but they may not think of their mild headaches as bothersome or concerning. How do you approach patients like these in your practice? I think it's important to inquire about the total number of headache days the patient is experiencing per month, because that helps us distinguish between episodic and chronic migraine, and therefore affects treatment. 
Personally, I ask patients to tell me about how many headache days per month they have and to include in the count not only the most severe or bothersome ones, but also the milder headaches. Another way to ask about this is to say, how many completely headache-free days does a patient have per month? If they report 15 or more headache days per month, regardless of severity, the diagnosis is likely chronic migraine. Anything less than 15 days a month is considered episodic migraine. Got it. So I guess to summarize, the distinction between episodic and chronic is actually frequency and not severity. And it's important to remember that not all headache days have to have migraineous features like nausea and light sensitivity. Is that right? Absolutely. It's very common in patients with chronic headache that the milder headaches may actually look like tension type headache, but more on that in our future episode. Wow, so much to take away from today's chat. Thank you so much for clarifying some of these questions that we in primary care see so often. And thank you also to our viewers for joining us today. And we hope that you can listen in on our next session where we explore additional topics in neurology. Until next time, bye.